This is your weekly update on the gold, silver, and precious metal mining stock sectors. I've got a ton of information for you. Plus, what did well-respected investor Michael Pinto say about gold that I think we all need to consider? Let's dig in and learn more. All right, guys, thanks for joining me today in Ron's basement. There's a lot going on. There's a washing machine. There's a furnace. There's me. I'm going to give you 10 supportive factors. Review my 10 supportive factors for the price of silver and gold. And then, as I promised, I'm going to tell you what Michael Pinto said about gold and uh, an idea that he had, something we all might want to possibly consider as we move deeper into... 2022. All right, number one, let's look at these factors for the price of, of, of gold, silver, and the mining stocks. The 10 year bond hit 2.8% this week. That is super high. Like a year and a half ago, it was, I don't know, quarter of a percent, or it was really low, half a percent. The fact that the 10 year bond rate has gone up so significantly and gold has continued to consolidate in what I think is a new price. Uh, support area is very supportive for the price of both gold and silver. High inflation. Need I say anything else? I mean, this inflation issue is is big right now and being exacerbated by the situations in Europe with the conflicts and China with COVID and supply chain and I don't know. Inflation's, you know, our, 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 our dollars are losing value. Our gold and silver uh, and mining stocks, which is what I invest in, are doing pretty well lately, okay? Um, that results in negative real interest rates, right? Which is kind of what I just explained. You, you know, when the inflation rate is higher than the rate of return you're getting on your money, you get negative real interest rates, which is always supportive for precious metals and generally speaking the precious metal mining stocks uh what about deflation i just want to touch on that quickly deflation right nobody talks about that but if the fed really puts the screws to the economy we could see deflation if that were to happen precious metals traditionally do well in deflationary environments uh we still have huge debt in this country only 30 trillion dollars right and at these current interest rates, the government can kind of keep the balls in the air. But if rates go significantly higher, you know, like I said, if the Fed really puts the screws to the economy, our government can't afford interest rates much, much higher than they are right now. I mean, it just it mathematically does not work. We still have big deficits, which means the government's spending more money than they're bringing in, which continues to add to that big debt pile. We have war. That's just always good for gold. Bad for the world. I don't like war, okay? But the fact of the matter is, it's happening. I didn't start it. You didn't start it. And it is generally supportive for the price of precious metals. More importantly, in regards to that conflict situation. By the way, this is point number eight. I'm going to review these points with you every week. This war is resulting in what I'm calling kind of like a new world economic order. All these sanctions, um, the Russians and the Chinese and the Indians, there's new financial structures being built and put in place. A lot of those countries are pro-gold, pro-real assets. They're supportive of real assets. Um, that's usually probably not going to be real good for the U.S. dollar, and that's good for the price of precious metals. Look, I'm an American. I was born here. I love America. Okay, I love America, but, you know, I got to be realistic about what's going on in the world, too. And uh, a lot of what's going on in the world from this new world financial structure that's being developed is probably going to be good for the price of precious metals. Okay, final points. Limited supply. Try to buy some silver. Good luck. Okay? And when you do find it, and you, you can find it, you're paying exorbitant premium. Okay? The price of silver is supposedly a little shy. 
of $26 per ounce, well, you're probably going to pay at least closer to $30 per ounce for the silver that you can get, and you're not going to have a real big selection. There's a shortage of, at least on the retail side, silver. Okay, and that, that can't be bad. <laughs> I'm not so sure about gold, but I know for silver, there's just a huge shortage and that can't be bad. It's also, you know, we know there's only so much gold and silver on the earth, right? Not like cryptocurrencies where there's an unlimited supply of different cryptos that can be made. There's only so much gold and silver. You can't make another gold. Uh, you can't make another silver. And from a limited supply perspective, it's also becoming much more difficult for the miners to find it all the big mining companies say and when you look at the stats okay bottom line it's getting harder and harder for them to find viable gold deposits throughout the world or and or silver i think silver is actually a little harder for them to find and finally let's not forget let's not forget your great 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 grandpa who lived 5,000 years ago. This ounce of silver that you can hold in your hand would be worth the same back then as it is today. It roughly would buy a bushel of wheat, okay? Silver and gold have maintained their value for thousands of years. And that to me is pretty damn cool, right? That the same little one ounce chunk of silver from 5,000 years ago is worth about as much today as it was back then. And a lot of different currencies have come and gone. I almost forgot. What did Michael Pinto say about gold? What Michael Pinto said was that he is holding gold and gold miners in his investment portfolio right now. Now, what he warned about was he thinks we're headed toward maybe a 30, 40, 50% market correction. And if and when that happens, you will want to get out of the miners in particular because when the market melts down, it takes everything with it. I'd highly recommend you research this guy. He has a great up-to-date interview on a channel called Wealthion, uh, which is a top-notch financial channel as well. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching. I do feel like gold and silver are in a new price pattern. I think there's been a lot of support looking at gold in the 1900, 1950 range. I could be wrong, okay? I don't have a crystal ball. Don't make any investment decisions based upon what I told you, but you are always welcome in Ron's basement. You can subscribe right here. And if you could like my video and share my video, that'd be great too. See you soon. <music>